wanted to just touch on that I think are absolutely amazing. The first one, scientists asked Obama to prosecute global warming skeptics. Now, this is not the first time we've seen calls for skeptics to be prosecuted. Uh, it's heresy, you know. It's heresy if you don't join the Church of Climatology, if you're not a true believer. We had Jake Tapper do a soft sell during the GOP debate. He said, you know, uh, we had uh, Secretary George Schultz talking about uh, insurance and things. And don't, don't you think we ought to just uh, do what everybody says to do and shut down all coal, all energy, just as a kind of an insurance policy? He put that question to uh, Ben Carson, who he identified as a skeptic. He put that to Chris Christie, who identifies himself as a true believer in the Church of Climatology. And then Rand Paul said, wait a minute, you want a skeptic? Throw me in that briar patch. And then Jake Tapper moved on because we don't want to have a real discussion about that. We just want to send people to jail under the RICO statute. They did it to abortion protesters. It was set up for organized crime. Stay with us. We'll be right back. This is Friday, September 18th, 2015. We have a couple of stories up on Infowars.com. 2,000 migrants arriving in Sweden every day. Will this country turn into an Islamic caliphate? Well, that's what some top imams hope it will happen. They We're going to play a video for you in just a moment. I'm going to narrate it. It's in a foreign language. I'm going to narrate to you what he has to say. Of course, Paul Joseph Watson has an article about that. Paul is going to be joining us in the uh, next segment to talk about that as well as this story. We see all the story about the clock kid. And we have a story up on Infowars.com from Steve Watson. Is this a fake hate scenario? Did they set this whole thing up? Is the clock kid Fuhrer all a big setup? The Muslim's kid's father is a prominent anti-Islamophobia activist. Police knew there was no danger, but they arrested him anyway. Look. If you take a look at the, at first it sounds kind of ridiculous, right? We've seen this happening over and over and over again in the schools with guns. We've seen kids, as Leanne McAdoo pointed out the other night during the uh, money bomb, she said, we've seen kids uh, suspended from school because the teacher said, you ate your Pop-Tart into the shape of a gun. Or you drew a gun on a sheet of paper, so we're going to suspend you. This kid created something that looked very much like a suitcase bomb. If you look at the article, you can see the pictures of it. It's a briefcase. It's got electronic components. It's got a circuit board in it. It's got a, um, it's got a clock in it, all this kind of stuff. I mean, it looks like the kind of props that they would use in an episode of 24 for a bomb, okay? So this is not drawing a picture of a gun. It's not pointing your finger at somebody and going pow, pow, like we used to do all the time when I was in school. It's not eating your Pop-Tart into the shape of a gun. And, of course, this guy is an activist about Islamophobia. So he sends his Muslim kid to school with something that looks like a suitcase bomb. And then when they make a big deal out of it, it's like, you're picking on us. But then it gets even more important because now we've got Zuckerberg with Facebook and we've got Obama inviting him to the White House. Did he ever, ever invite any of these kids who are picked on for all these trivial issues in the paranoid schools? Did he ever invite any of them to the White House? Of course he didn't. Of course he didn't. Now, the dad says... Mohammed will not be returning to public school. He says, I want to make sure this never happens again to another child globally. Globally. Globally, yeah. See, they have that agenda. It's a global agenda. It's an Islamic agenda to take over the country. Now, we got a, a kid in Georgia who comes back and blasts the White House for this. This is a Georgia teen who went to YouTube this weekend, or just this week, I should say, because this is a, a more recent story than that. And blasts Obama for this. This kid's a, a conservative. He's done other videos. This particular video has hit over uh, 330,000 view, views at this point in time. Uh, and, of course, he says, why are you doing this? And, of course, w there's a lot more to it than just Obama trying to kowtow to Muslims. It's interesting that in a question and answer session in a public event, Trump has been excoriated because a guy stood up and says, hey, we've got Obama, who's a Muslim, he's not even a citizen, and uh, I want to ask you about these camps that are being built everywhere. And everybody says, wait a minute, wait a minute. Donald Trump should have dressed that guy down. The Daily Mail says there's outrage as Donald Trump fails to correct an ignorant supporter who stood up and said, Obama's a Muslim, not even American. And Obama, they said, John McCain did that back in 2008. Trump said the real issue is Obama's war on Christians. And that's, that is true. 
That is true. He said that in response to that. He didn't apologize. Listen, if you want to know about Obama's background, you need to take a look at the movie that came out a couple of years ago called The Act of Killing. It's kind of a quasi-art film, quasi-documentary, quasi-acting this out. They talked to some guys who were part of the death squads of the Indonesian government that was allied with the CIA. It was essentially a marriage that mirrored the family that Obama grew up in. His dad was part of this ruthless regime that the CIA supported there and continues to support for decades. It continues to remain there. These guys were talking about how they brought people in and executed them. Cold-hearted killers bragging about it. They, at first they went in and they started talking to some villagers and they started getting some pushback from the government there. But then they found some of the guys who had actually done the killing were more than happy to talk about it. They're more than happy to call themselves gangsters. You have to understand that Obama grew up in this country with somebody who was part of that ruthless regime. Somebody who was, his mother was part of the CIA family. Her, her parents were CIA. She was hanging out in the place where the CIA people always hang out in these foreign countries. That's the environment where he grew up in. He went to school in a madrasa. He grew up in that country. You want to talk about anchor babies? Talk about anchor presidents. Talk about Manchurian candidates. Regardless of what his technically legal situation is that was the environment he grew up in that's why he's hostile to america that's why he's hostile to christianity that's why he's hostile to our constitution he just he despises this country we've got another article about how he wants to make it possible We're for on illegals the to vote stay with the us we'll be right back. On the stand like greg allman sometimes i do feel like i'm tied to the whipping post you're gonna feel like it too if obama has his way because he's got about another year and a half to go we may be all excited about the GOP debates and think, yeah, we're going to get a new uh, big brother. Uh, but you know what? He can do a lot of damage in the next couple of years. A lot of damage has happened in just the last couple of months. In Europe, for example, we have massive waves of immigrants that are coming in. People are trying to deal with that particular problem. They don't even have time, most of them, to really take a close look at the origins of that problem. Of course, there is a massive humanitarian issue there. We can aid people in the country, though. One of the first things we could do to aid them is to stop fomenting the war. You didn't hear any talk during the GOP debate about the confessions of the top ISIS military commander about how he was trained by the U.S. military. How the U.S. military was bringing in Chechen Muslims who had been fighting the Russians, bringing them into Syria three years ago. You didn't hear about that, did you? You didn't hear about how we equip, arm, and train these people, how we created this force just like we created al-Qaeda initially as the Mujahideen. No, this is something that's just organically sprung up, and we have to respond to it. A similar situation, I think, may be happening, and there's an article on Infowars.com from Steve Watson that we just mentioned in the last segment, is this whole thing with the suitcase bomb kid, the clock kid, as they call him, is that whole thing a setup? Joining us now is Paul Joseph Watson. We want to talk about a video as well as these other issues, a video that was put out by a top imam, and this is an article by Paul Joseph Watson. Muslim immigrants should breed with Europeans to, quote, conquer their country. Thank you for joining us, Paul Joseph Watson. Good to be back, David. Uh, before we talk about this, let's just give people a little bit of a sample of this video. It's up on the article that you put up. Uh, it's in a foreign language, so we're going to run this up here, and I'm going to uh, read the uh, subtitles to people. We're going to play a little bit of that so they can get a, a, a feel for it, and then we'll read them uh, and talk about some of the uh, uh, what he actually says. So let's let's run that video, guys. He says the infidels want to torment us. They want to be. They want us to be humiliated. The Quran says the Jews and the Christians will never be pleased with you, but we will never follow their religion. This dark night will be over. Soon we will trample them underfoot, Allah willing. Germany is not a compassionate country that wishes to absorb refugees from Syria and Iraq and Palestinian refugees in the Levant and elsewhere. You know what? Neither are the Saudi Arabians. He's not going to say that. Europe has become old and decrepit. Now, here's the key part here. They see Europe as old, decrepit. He says, they need human reinforcements. No force is more powerful than the human force of us Muslims. 
O Muslims, the Germans say in their economic reports that they need 50,000 young workers. That's exactly it. Let's go back to Paul Joseph Watson. That's a uh, flavor, Paul, of what he's saying. And, of course, he's making a uh, demographic argument. Uh, he's, he's saying that uh, Europe is weak. It's dying. And, you know, quite frankly, that's true if we look at the demographics. As I pointed out earlier, Mark Stein, the uh, Canadian uh, ultra-conservative, had pointed out that birth rates were dr falling so dramatically in Europe that, for example, the Italians, who used to be one of the have, have one of the highest birth rates, they now have a birth rate that is so low, it's just barely above one. So that population in Italy, the uh, indigenous Italian population, is being cut in half every generation. Meanwhile, you have uh, third world countries, especially Muslim countries, where they have an average of five children per family. Uh, if, as if they come in in any great numbers, and this was written maybe a decade, 15 years ago, if they come in in any great numbers. What he talked about was Europe becoming Eurabia. Your comments, Paul. Well, this is what the Muslim imam went on to say at the end of this video, which was during a speech at the al Asqa Mosque in Jerusalem. He said, quote, they wish that we were dead, but they have lost their fertility. He's talking about Europe. So they look for fertility in our midst. We will give them fertility. We will breed children with them because we shall conquer their countries. He goes on to say whether they like it or not, Americans, Italians, Germans, and the French will be forced to take refugees and, quote, we shall soon collect them in the name of the coming caliphate. We will say to you, these are our sons, feed them or send them, or we will send our armies to you. So he said that during a speech, and you made the point. He's basically everything he says is true. This might be yes. incendiary, which it is. Mm -hmm. But you mentioned Italy, for example. They had a birth rate of around two children per couple back in 1960. Now it's 1.3. Now, if you take that 1.3 figure over the next 45 years, Italy's native population is going to halve in just 45 years. Similar case with Germany. They, they're losing 100,000 people annually. So we're being told absolute lies and bunk about this refugee crisis being about, you know, humanitarian, compassionate, you know, all based on feelings. That's why Germany's bringing in 800,000 asylum seekers before the end of the year. As this imam says, that's completely false. They're bringing them in because they need the cheap labor because in the West, governments have not incentivized, not encouraged their populations to have children like they have done in the Middle East and other areas. And that's for numerous different reasons. One of the main ones is, as the West has become more secular, children have become increasingly viewed as a burden in the present and not to secure the future of the population of that particular country. So Europe is completely dying out. That's why they need to bring in these hordes of migrants for cheap labor. It has nothing to do, in many cases, with Syrian refugees. Um, half of the Syrian refugees coming in, well, it's about 50% that are Syrian, but of those 50%, 90% can't even prove that they're Syrian in some areas. So this is being completely exploited by economic migrants to flee to the welfare havens of countries like Sweden and Germany. And according to these Islamic preachers, they're going to do it to conquer the countries. That Those are his words, not mine. And in fact, if you go into the Quran, it states, quote, and whoever emigrates for the cause of Allah will find on the earth many locations and abundance. So there are several sections in the Quran which um, encourage Muslims to emigrate to other non-Muslim countries as a form of stealth jihad and we've talked about in, mm -hmm. about that in the past we've covered articles about it so shocking statements but he's telling the truth basically we're being told that this is all about compassionate humanitarianism when it's not they're bringing in these huge amounts of refugees migrants to fill cheap labor and it's going to have terrible consequences in terms of social cohesion in europe which we're already beginning to see oh absolutely you know you mentioned several different factors there we've got cheap labor We've got supporting the welfare state Ponzi scheme. And, of course, there's the divide and conquer aspect of it. The cheap labor and the divide and conquer are the sorts of things that we see the governments want to divide and conquer to control the people. The corporations want uh, cheap labor. And the people there at the lower level from those who are at the very top who are pushing uh, for a globalist government, 
I think those people are looking at it saying, well, you know, if we could keep this welfare state going, because, you know, we need workers at the bottom to support people who are on Social Security, the retirees, and that sort of thing. People need to understand that the first place they had Social Security was in Germany, and it was put in by uh, Bismarck. He picked the age of 65 because that was the